Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, after looking at uh, uh, Saturday's game uh, throughout the day on Sunday, um, we beat a really good football team in Troy. Uh, I thought we did some really good things on both sides of the ball uh, at times. Uh, I thought uh, that um, we are still making some mental errors, making some alignment errors, making some communication errors, little things that you may or may not see on, uh, on film or from the stands that uh, we need to continue to, to get better at and shore up. And, um, you know, I, I liked what we did at times offensively with being an explosive team and scoring at some critical times. We, we missed a number of opportunities uh, that we could have gotten points. I, I credit Troy on that um, because I thought they had a really good plan. And then on defense, um, we had a little lull there in the second quarter where we um, couldn't get off the field on third down and, and, and had some penalties and, and one explosive play. But uh, I thought the second half, the defense really um, you know, played exceptional football. And we're continuing to learn. We're continuing to get better. We still have to continue to improve. We're by no means a finished product. And we have to continue to get better um, as, these, as these weeks in September go by, um, leading us into our conference play. We've got a tremendous challenge this week uh, going on the road. A uh, great environment to, to play Missouri. And, and they've got a really good football team. And um, so it will be a big challenge for us. Coach, you mentioned last Saturday Christian Duffy was getting closer. Is he at a point where we can maybe see him this week? Uh, it, I would probably caution that. Maybe Thursday we would know. He did practice yesterday, uh, which was a, a great sight to see. Um, today and tomorrow will be the kind of the telling days when we go a little bit faster and go a little bit harder and uh, with our pads on. He's going to get some work, and then we'll have to evaluate and see where he's at on Thursday. To so evaluate where the run game is right now, what just needed to be a little bit more crisp to get it going on Saturday? Uh, it's sustaining blocks, I would say. IDing the right people in the in the in the scheme, and then sustaining blocks. Um, and uh, if you flipped it and and said they did a tremendous job of of changing targets by slanting and angling, and then they got off blocks and did a really good job. And so, um, you know, we can say we've got to sustain blocks better and communicate better. Um, and, and that's something that we've got to focus on because there there was not as many creases as we'd like. That's what I want to ask. How much of a focus um, will Luther Burden be for you guys on defense? Uh, huge focus. Um, tremendously talented player. Uh, can beat you in a lot of ways. And I know that I watched with Coach Klannerman and the staff quite a bit this morning, whether it's you know just stretching the field vertically because he's got such great speed and such great ball skills on vertical balls as well as, you know, um, quick screens, jet sweeps, uh, the return game, everything. Uh, I think he's a he's a really really good player. Uh, picking up on that, uh, has Missouri shown its upside to its offense, or is that st still unexplored this season? And they've got a much more they can do. Uh, I think they've got much more that they that they can do. Um, but I think. Everybody, I think we do too, both sides of the ball. I think that's the unique thing about the game this year is and I went back and looked at last year's game. There's a lot of guys on both sides that, that have played in this game and um, veteran guys, veteran guys up front on both sides of the ball, veteran quarterbacks that, um, um, you know, you don't just watch last year's game in the first two, two games of this year. You got to watch a lot of last year's games as well to dive in deeper and deeper to see you know, uh, of any advantages you could have or or um, tendencies, so to speak. But uh, with the veteran quarterbacks that each team has, as well as really good players on both sides of the line of scrimmage, O-line and D-line, um, I, I don't think either team has probably scratched the surface of what they can do. What stout is this Missouri defense? Really good. They're, they're very physical. Um, they, you know, we're talking about sustaining blocks. They don't stay blocked. They do a great job of block destruction. And then they're, you know, they're really fast and they play really good man coverage. They break on the ball well in zone. Um, you know, I, once again, there's a lot of guys that have played a lot of football on that side of the ball uh, for them uh, on defense. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a big challenge for us. We have to find way. We have to be able to rush the football. You can't say you're going to go in there and throw it 50 times. Now, um, you know, can we find ways to rush the football? That's, you know, it's, it's what is it, Tuesday afternoon, and we're still uh, seeing how we can do those things. And finally, uh, does anything linger from how last year's game ended? Um, 
trying to think how last year's game ended because it was a long day out there. Um, not really. Uh, oh, no. Nah. No, I I never even thought about that. I, I, that. Now that you say that fits, I never even thought about that. Um, no, just a weird, weird day in general with the amount of delays that we had um, and how hard it was raining. I know it was very difficult for us to throw the football. I, I know it had to be really difficult for them to throw the football. I mean, it was... It was pouring, and um, so, no, I, I, it was just a very, very strange day. You've given up one touchdown so far and are number one in rushing defense. How good is the defense doing so far? Um, they're, playing, they're playing well. I think there's more in them uh, on defense uh, for sure. Uh, a couple things I'd say about that is, you know, we're still – uh, we were better in block destruction on the perimeter this Saturday than we were uh, the Saturday before with some of the bubbles and some of the perimeter run where we were able to get off blocks. Um, we still are missing a few too many tackles. Uh, and, you know, some of the things that we're showing people, you're not running into that. And if you are running into it, we're probably going to stop it. We've probably got to flip the script a little bit because of – um, you know, some people, whether or not we're exposed a little bit in the passing game, haven't played as well in the passing game. Some of that is because we're just short in the passing game, trying to outnumber them in the run. And it's the great philosophy of that make people one dimensional, don't let them run the football. Um, we're now facing a group that can do both. I think they've got great balance to, to run the pass. So, um, Coach Klanerman's got to do a great job of, of disguising looks and changing pictures. And then after the game, I asked you. You know, hey, how about Khalid Duke? And you said he's a terror. I yeah. was wondering if you might be able to expound upon that. Just what he's makes just so hard good. to block one on one. Um, he really is, and we do some different things to try to get him in one on one looks. Um, and he's just very aggressive, very tenacious rushing the passer. He's got a lot of different moves. He's not just a speed rusher. He's a power rusher. He can uh, be a finesse guy. And he's a guy that is just refuses to stay blocked. And he does a great job with, with extension and getting off blocks. And then he can really run. And, uh, you know, he made a couple of sacks that uh, were really, really big-time plays in three-man rushes where – you know, it's one on one, and, and he um, can beat somebody on the edge. Coach, I was going to give you credit for 30 rush yards allowed and 56 attempts, and D. Yep. Scott kind of stole my thunder. Yep. So, the <laughs> one rush for 46 yards, what, what went wrong there? Um, uh, Coach Clannon would say he wants the call back, um, but in the same respect, um, we made the call, and we got somebody cut off that was not supposed to get cut off, but give their guys credit. I think Troy's really good, and then we, we maybe overplayed it a little bit, um, uh, and so we, we just didn't have somebody in that gap because it was a blitz. We got caught in a blitz, and they, and they creased us, and that back, um, you know, he, I thought he was a terrific player, and I thought we did a phenomenal job shutting him down for a number of, of carries, and he got two on us. Um, one on a second and long where we played pass and he got us for about 15 and then that big one that he got us on and, and I was happy VJ Payne ran him down or he might have might have scored on it but uh, yeah just uh, got got caught in a blitz but uh, that's going to happen. Does Missouri's speed defensively jump out as as he, much as yeah, anything at you? Absolutely, yeah. They're they're really fast, but you combine that with the fact that they're really physical and dominant up front and at linebacker. Um, you know they they don't probably need to always have the extra player in the in the run fit because they're they do a really good job of getting off blocks um and then they can you know they can lock you up and play man coverage um you know and there's a lot of veteran guys that have played a lot of football for them so um yeah they've got great team speed but then throw on the fact that they're really physical up front how well is brendan mott making his statement up front he's Playing well, we talk about Duke, uh, Mott, and and Nate Matlock are playing really well, uh, and to be able to have those guys and Cody Stuffle being rotate four guys, we're keeping those guys really fresh. But uh, Mott made a couple of really good on Will Lee's interception. It's not an interception if if uh, Mott doesn't split a double team and get a hit on the quarterback, um, and that doesn't get you know it doesn't get noticed a lot other than when you're watching it with us and our guys are are congratulating Will Lee and we're saying hey great play by Mott. Um, and, and Nate's doing some really good things. It's fun to have a healthy Nate. 
few flashes in a real game for Tobios and Sami. Does it, they kind of push you to when I'm on third down a little bit more? Um, yeah, we're continuing to um, experiment, so to speak. You know, uh, when he's on the field, maybe Duke's not. You know, we've got to be smart on that too. Of of you know, he's one of uh, he's an exceptional pass rusher. Now, can we get him on the field? Are we going to have him as a defensive end? Can he play linebacker? Um, he's improving so much as a linebacker right now, and that's that's our focus is. Um, to make sure he can back up Des Purnell, um, but then find different situations. He's helping us out on special teams. He's doing a really good job on kickoff, even though he hasn't. He's made one play, hasn't had a couple opportunities, but he's, you know, really handling his side of the field just because he's got so much speed. But uh, um, young player that's continuing to improve, and and he's a guy that we're talking about of those young guys that needs to continue to make the next step to cut Keegan Johnson a little bit more loose this week? Um, yeah, we hope so. We'll we'll, uh, we'll see. You know, last year he was very limited in practice, or last week he was very limited in practice uh, and was able to play and play really well. Um, I think it was the spots that we played him in to make sure that we weren't going to have him sitting and, and be cool for a long time. So let's see how it goes Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, he moved around fine yesterday. You know, that was probably the biggest benefit of – Coming out of Saturday is we didn't have anybody that played Saturday not practice yesterday. That was big for us to not lose anybody. Uh, you touched on it a little bit earlier, but uh, could you assess the the cornerbacks' play so far, and yeah. also how helpful has it been? The pressure you've been able to put on the yeah, uh, all that stuff's much better when when you're getting a pass rush um, for sure. And we're doing a really good job whether we're rushing three, four, five, or six of, of putting pressure on the quarterback. Um, Jacob Parrish has been phenomenal. He's been dynamite. And whether he's playing in zone, playing in man, um, uh, getting his hands on on a lot of balls, uh, being really disruptive at the line of scrimmage, been really pleased with him. Um, Will Lee. Playing his second game, I thought, really got into a comfort zone of understanding what we're doing defensively. Really was happy with the way Will played the run. Uh, made a couple tackles for loss. Did a great job in block destruction. Um, played really good man coverage. Their, their one touchdown, uh, I don't know who was going to defend that one. Um, that was a great throw and catch. Uh, Keenan Garber came in and, and, and is also playing well. Um, and, uh, you know, those three guys are, are kind of – taking most of the reps right now. We're still got a couple of guys that, that we're pushing that um, um, we need to continue to improve to give those guys a little bit of a break. And also staying with the secondary, the safeties, are you starting to get to kind of figure out a rotation? Well, uh, Marquis Siegel, having him back was really, really good. He's a good player and made a lot of made a lot of impact plays. And, and um, even when he doesn't show up, it's probably a good thing because he's um, – Playing his responsibility and and uh, that side of the field is 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 pretty shut down. Continuing to work with VJ, playing a new position, um, and he's getting more and more comfortable and making more and more plays and getting more active. Um, Kobe's still working his way back um, from from injury, and I think uh, um, we haven't seen Kobe's best, but I know we're going to because he just you know, he didn't play football for. A number of months coming off of his of his injury, and then we're still a work in progress at, and the backups at all those spots. Desmond Purnell had an underrated game on Saturday. Heads up plays, plays with intensity, doing those kind of things. Was that a big part of how he won the job at Sam? Yeah, uh, plays every play as hard as he can play, and he and he's so smart, and so crafty, and he's physical. Um, I thought they made a great call on the fourth and one where the quarterback acted like he didn't know the ball was going to be snapped. Uh, and we were on our heels, uh, exception of, of really two guys that played it really well. Uso, they couldn't move him. And then Dez just came in and flew down the line of scrimmage, made a big hit, and kept him from a first down. Um, but uh, uh, Dez is gaining more and more confidence as a full-time starter and a full-time player uh, that we saw glimpses of last year and then have seen him really take off this uh, – this fall camp and then first part of the season. A couple of weeks ago, you said you, you felt like you guys were still learning about what Treshawn Ward can do. After yep. two games, what have you learned about Treshawn? Um, I think uh, he's a, a great slashing running back. We haven't probably used him in the past game like I know we will uh, in time. Um, 
gained a lot of yards, uh, grinding some things out. Physical, physical runner. Uh, I, I, I was so impressed with our drive after Jaden makes the unbelievable catch um, to get us out of the hole of us just pounding the football and taking a five or six minute drive where we were able to rush for four, rush for five, rush for three, and keep the keep the drive alive by um, running the football. And Treshawn was a big part of that. Um. In, in the fourth quarter, after uh, things were kind of settled, was there any thought of, of, of trying any of the backups quarterback-wise, or did no, you want to keep Will in there? Not, not at that time. Um, you know, based on some of the things that, that Coach Klein and I have discussed, um, we wanted to stay with Will. Um, part of it was there's some formations and some calls that uh, um, – we want, you know, I never thought the game was in hand either. You know, it, it was uh, 28-13 in the fourth quarter, and they kick a field goal uh, to cut it to a two-score game. And and at that time, I think some people were comfortable, but as a head coach, you never are because it's down to a two-score game. And if we don't make the big throw to Jaden and have to punt the football, it's down to you know, it's it could be a one-score game. So um, even though the score was what it was, uh, the game didn't go like that. And so um, you know, other than the last series on defense where Toby st- had the strip sack, um, we kept most of the uh, uh, older or starters in. And Brady Cook, I know he struggled last year against you I'm sure some of that was the weather some of that was how good you guys were in the secondary last year but how has he kind of improved yeah I, well I don't think last year you can throw that game out because that's not him uh, I think he's a terrific quarterback I just I don't know him at all but just watching him play he's a he's a tremendous competitor um, I think he's a tough kid uh, I think he throws the ball exceptionally well he's a very underrated runner and I say that because I don't um, know him as a, as a as what they had him as a recruit and all that stuff. That kid's a very talented runner that uh, worries us running the football. Um, but uh, I think he throws the ball really well. And and last, I remember the game and Adrian saying, you know, coach, we're calling these pass plays and it's hard to grip that ball. It it, it was waterlogged. So I know that Brady couldn't grip the ball any better than than Adrian could. So I take that game out of it. And and we granted we made some good plays. Um, but some of that, a lot of that had to do uh, with the weather. And so, you know, we kind of took that. We've taken a lot of, of the plays of that game, but not the results of the plays because I think there's some of the things that um, we're susceptible to that they'll probably come back to. Uh, Coach, you've talked about how good Jacob Parrish has been. Could you sort of talk about how he's grown to this point and then where – his potential really lies. Yeah, uh, he's. You know, we thought he was a phenomenal recruit coming out of high school that um, just needed an opportunity, and we gave him the opportunity because we saw him at camp and he he dominated our camp when when he was here. And then I thought he did a tremendous job as a freshman, saying, "Okay, I know I'm not quite where Echo and Julius are. Uh, I'm going to keep learning." Um, and then take whatever reps I can get and you know, make the most of those. And as the season went on, he got. Uh, you know, more comfortable of our knowing our defense, more comfortable of knowing what offenses do. And then I saw him take off in in the spring. Saw him take off during the fall. He put on some uh, some some muscle mass. Put on some weight. Um, I think the sky's the limit for him because I think he is one of the the special uh, corners in the conference. And then he and Will have a different type of receiver. They've been based off against some taller receivers. What will they have to do to adjust to Luther Burden? Um, you know, uh, that's it's going to be the challenge. You know, um, you know we have, you know, Keegan and and Phil and RJ that are, um, you would say smaller guys. I don't consider Luther Burden to be small because he's two hundred and ten pounds or something, and he's six foot and he's uh, a tremendous runner with the ball in his hands. But he's you're right, he's not six foot five like some of the guys that we've gone against. But uh, um, we we need to know where he's at at all times because he's one of the premier players in the country, uh, wide receiver, return, um, catching uh, jet sweeps, whatever. He's one of the premier, premier players in college football. We learned last week that K-State's going to stay Nike. What does that 
mean to you and K-State football? You know, just um, excited to continue the partnership. Um, you know, we've been in, in Nike ever since I, that I've been here. Um, and uh, I know that uh, some other conversations were had, um, probably more with, with Gene and our administration than, than with myself. Uh, but I, I'm excited. I, I know our kids are excited, and and to continue the partnership. And the guys like the products. And um, you know, uh, we'll. I don't think we're going to change to lavender or black uniforms tomorrow. You know, but <laughs> you know that now we at least can start having some conversations. You know, but uh, uh, those still t still take time. Be going into a stadium that's going to be sold out with sixty-two thousand people. Can you take us to just what that's going to be like on Saturday? I think it's going to be a great environment for college football. I think this is a great game, uh, a regional non-conference conference, uh, game and rivalry. Uh, it's a, going to be a great test for our guys um, because we're going to go into these type of, type of environments as we get into the Big 12. And, I, and it's a great measuring stick. I, I don't know how the game is going to go. It's going to be a great opportunity for our guys to measure themselves against a tremendous football team on the road, hostile environment, using all of our different snap counts, um, things that we're going to have to practice this week. I think there'll be some purple there. Um, you guys would know better than I than I would uh, as far as you know some of the fans. But our our fans will find some tickets. Uh, I, I know they will. We've got great fan base, but it's a it's a great opportunity for our guys um, because you know for us to be successful in our league, we have to be successful on the road. So it's a great test.